So in the previous lesson, we solved this problem using a first order Lagrange polynomial. And in this lesson, we are basically going to solve this same problem, but then this time using a second order Lagrange polynomial. So the main idea here is that we want to estimate the velocity at t equals 16 seconds using a second order Lagrange polynomial. So in the previous lesson, we established the fact that the Lagrangian interpolation is given by fn of x and that is equal to the summation from i equals 0 to n of li of x times f of xi where n represents the order of the polynomial function and li of x is said to be the product from j equals 0 where j is not equal to i to n of x minus xj divided by xi minus xj so basically we are going to use these two formulas to find the velocity or to estimate better still the velocity at t equals 16 seconds so let's try to solve this example together now since we want to solve this problem using a second order lagrange polynomial it means that we have n to be 2 and then also we are going to have n plus 1 data points so that is 2 plus 1 data points hence we have 3 data points so let's write that here 3 data points and we are going to i mean uh, talk about this later in the solution so 3 data points we will come back to this later in the solution so at this point in time what we want to do is to write down the velocity function so from this same formula we can have the velocity function that is v now we have n to be 2 so we have v2 of t because the velocity is a function of time and that is equal to the summation from i equals 0 to 2 of li of t times v of ti so basically this is the velocity function and then we can expand this so that we have now because this is summation we have starting from i equals 0 to 2 so we have that of 0 and then we add that of 1 and then we add that of 2 so basically when you have i to be equal to 0 then that's going to be l naught of t times v of t naught when i is equal to 1 you have l1 of t times v of t1 when i is equal to 2 then you have plus l2 of t times v of t2 so basically this is the expanded version of the velocity function so the next thing is that we need six components to solve this problem we need all these six components to solve this problem and then for v of t naught v of t1 v of t2 we can generate them from the table given so we go back to the table we want to select three values that are closest to 16 so we know that 15 is closer to 16 because 16 is in between 15 and then 20 so initially we select 15 and then 20 now we need to select another value or a third value so we want to look at 10 and then 22.5 which of them is closer or is more closer to 16 now the difference between 10 and 16 is 6 difference between 22.5 and 16 is 6.5 which means that 10 is more closer to 16 than 22.5 therefore we select t naught or we take t naught to be equal to 10 seconds we take t1 to be equal to 15 seconds and then we take t2 to be equal to 20 seconds i think the way we were able to derive t naught t1 and t2 have already been spelled out in the previous lesson so you can check them out and then you clearly understand how we arrived at 
T0 to be 10 seconds, T1 to be 15, and then T2 to be 20 seconds, assuming you don't clearly understand in this lesson. So, from for these um, time values, we have their corresponding velocity values. So that is, we have V of T0 from the table. So we have the values for these three components. Now let's focus on L0 of T, L1 of T, and then L2 of T. So we come back to this formula. So for for L0 of T, for L0 of T, that is the first one, that is basically equal to, we have the product from j equals zero and we are saying that j should not be equal to i now in this case we have i to be zero so it means that even though we are starting from j equals zero j should not be equal to zero so then to two now if j should not be equal to zero then it means that j is equal to one and two so here we are going to have t minus tj and then here we have ti so i is 0 minus tj so basically this becomes t minus t1 because j should not be equal to 0 so it becomes t minus t1 and then t naught minus t1 so that is for one and then for two we are going to have t minus t2 over t naught minus t2 so that is for l naught of t then we move on to we move on to l1 of t so from this i mean you can simply write that of l1 of t what this means is that for the first one j is not equal to zero so we have that of one and then that of two so if here we have l1 of t it means that j should not be equal to one therefore we are going to have zero and then two so here it becomes t minus t naught t1 minus t naught that is for zero and then for two we have t minus t2 divided by t1 minus t2 then we come back to l2 of t so it means that j should not be equal to 2 therefore it is 0 and 1 so here we have t minus t naught t2 minus t naught and then we have t minus t1 over t2 minus t1 so we have all the six components so we can write the velocity function by inputting all the other values or other expressions inside so we are going to have v2 of t that is from here and that is basically equal to we have L naught of T. This is L naught of T. Now, as we write L naught of T, we are going to input the values of T naught, T1, and then T2. So for L naught of T, we are going to have T minus T1 is T1 is 15. So T minus 15 divided by t naught minus t1 t naught is 10 minus t1 that is 15 times t minus t2 that is 20 divided by t naught 10 minus 20 so this times v of t naught v of t naught that is 227.04 so 
227.04 and then plus and then we move on to that of l1 of t so l1 of t that is this so here we are going to have t minus 10 divided by 15 that is t1 minus t0 that is 10 times t minus t2 20 divided by t1 15 minus t2 20 and then we multiply that by v of t1 so v of t1 that is 362.78 so 362.78 and then for the last term we have l2 of t so l2 of t this is t minus 10 divided by 20 minus 10 times t minus 15 divided by 20 minus 15 and then we have this times that is um, 517.35 517.35 so 517.35 so basically this is the velocity function where where 10 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 20. now at this point we want to estimate the value of the velocity at t equals 16 seconds so we say that for v2 of t at t equals 16 seconds we have v2 of 16 and this is basically equal to so wherever we see t we are going to fix 16 so we have 16 minus So, when you compute this, you are going to have V2 of 16, or better still, yes, you are going to have V2 of 16, that is equal to 392.1876 meter per second. And we say that this is nearly equal to 392.19 meter per second that is at t equals 16 seconds now in the previous lesson we had the velocity at t equals 16 seconds that is v1 of t that was equal to 393.69 meter per second that was at t equals 16 seconds that that was when we used the first order lagrange polynomial so in this lesson where we use the second order lagrange polynomial we have the value to be 392.19 meter per second also at t equals 16 seconds so assuming that you want to find the absolute relative error that is given by this then we say that that is equal to the absolute value of the new value which is 392.19 minus the previous value 393.69 divided by the new value 392.19 hundred percent now when you compute this then you are going to have the absolute relative error to be equal to 0 0.3825 percent